the G20 summit is on in the national capital and all eyes are at what is taking place at the resplendent Bharat Mandapam. Joining us on the broadcast at this point of time is a very special guest, Dr. Devi Shetty, who is the founder and chairman of Narayana Health. Devi Prasad Shetty is an Indian entrepreneur and a cardiac surgeon who has performed more than 1 lakh heart operations. Thank you for joining us on the broadcast, sir. My very first question to you, what do you make of the Delhi Declaration at the G20 summit? See, the, uh, it's a very proud moment for all the Indians because now we are, are reaching a position to ascertain ourselves as a country which can lead the world in many areas. Every few decades, some countries take the lead in pushing the global prosperity economy and the social order. It was initially it was US and Europe and to some extent China took over to, to quite a large extent. Now it is India's turn and we are very happy to be living in this time to see our country being uh, uh, recognized by all the uh, so-called developing nations or developed nations as a country which can drive the global economy. It's a very, very uh, happy experience for all of us. Indeed, a proud and happy experience for all of us, as you've put it. Um, how big a statement is it that India has achieved 100% consensus at the G20 summit? The India has always been fair in terms of its relationship with the neighbors and rest of the world. We, uh, in the history of this country, we haven't really uh, uh, invaded any other country and we are a peace-loving country which believes in fairness. And today we are in a position to make a significant difference to the world. And this is exactly what we have put across. It's not about just taking from them. It's about giving and taking. So in which both, there is, it's like a winsome game for both parties. So essentially, whatever points we have put across, and uh, obviously there was no debate because it's good for them, good for us, good for everyone. So I am not surprised at all that, uh, you know, uh, most of the declarations, what we wanted has gone through. Indeed, and even speaking of the consensus, India has achieved a consensus of 112 initiatives. This is more than double that had taken place last year. How do you commend this government's efforts to make India's G20 presidency successful? If you uh, uh, track back from the day that India was chosen to leave the G20, there has been a very, very uh, uh, organized attempt to build the uh, momentum from the very beginning. I don't think uh, anyone uh, who are at the forefront of uh, organizing uh, the, all these events around G20 uh, uh, took even a day's leave because from the day one, India has been discussing bringing all the forces together of diverse interest. And you see, what we see now is a very final part of what has happened. But all these, uh, uh, all these agreements between nations take uh, hours and hours and he, he, the, the months and months of effort. It's not a mean task. And India, by our position, of what we are and what we stand for was in a or is in a good position to bring all the global forces together. Yeah, I'm not at all surprised that all these declarations have gone on smoothly uh, in terms of, uh, you know, interest of India's interest and rest of the world. It is a culmination of all the hard work which has been done all these months. 
Indeed, uh, but apart from all of this, how do you see the promotion of India's history and culture at the Bharat Mandapam, whether it be uh, the grand Nataraja idol that has been placed outside or the dancing girl figurine? It is very, very important for a country like India to uh, showcase what we are, what we stand for. Uh, marketing is not considered as a right word by a lot of people, but it is very important for us to show to the rest of the world what we are. And a marketing of uh, our culture or our belief and what we believe in, in our ability to make a difference to our own countrymen and to the rest of the world. Uh, in terms of our ideology, philosophy, and uh, everything. It has to be presented to the rest of the world in the form of some symbols. And uh, our government took the right decision in putting the right mascot for every activity of ours. On that note, sir, last question to you. Has the G20 presidency established India as a voice of balance in the new global order? India was always in this position, but today, because we are uh, at the cutting edge of uh, many areas which matter to the world, maybe in technology, software, uh, uh, space technology, manufacturing, uh, you know, the, the service industry, in everything, uh, we are at the cutting edge and we are at the forefront. You leave alone what is happening in our country. You look at the top countries, top companies of the world, which are at the cutting edge of technology. Who are the people who are managing those companies? Who are the people who are working at the grassroots level to the position of a chairman or a CEO? Most of them come from Indian origin. It didn't happen by accident. It happened because of India's effort in investing on education, creating an environment where talent thrives and some of the talented people went overseas to acquire new knowledge. Some of them came back, some of them stayed back. Those who came back, they spread the knowledge to the others. So this is, this is all these things happen over a period of, uh, you know, uh, several decades of India's effort. Yeah, it's a very, uh, it is very satisfying for me watching all these things uh, changing and India emerging as the country which can bring the world out of the recession and the economic crisis. Yeah, I'm very happy to be living in this uh, era uh, which makes us so happy for being an Indian. All right, sir. With that, I would like to thank you for joining us on the broadcast, presenting your perspectives and insights as far as the G20 summit is concerned. Meanwhile, viewers, we continue our rolling coverage of what exactly is taking place. You can see we're getting live shots from Rajgat in uh, the national capital. Just a short while before uh, Emmanuel Macron, who is currently uh, the president of France, he, ha he was welcomed by Prime Minister Modi. He was accorded a warm welcome, uh, given a Khadi scarf, and of course shown the Sabarmati ashram background. Uh, meanwhile, joining us on the broadcast um, is Dr. GVR Shastri, political analyst, and Mr. Sandeep Chandra, another political analyst, as well as Ms. Rakhi Bakshi, who continues to be with us. Um, I'd like to rope in Dr. Shastri into the discussion first. Um, some rather key bilaterals are slated to take place today. One, of course, with France. Uh, but then there are other pull-aside discussions that shall also take place. I'm, of course, referring to that with Canada, United Arab Emirates, Turkey, South Korea, as well as Brazil and Nigeria. So, of course, a lot is there. Uh, Prime Minister Modi's schedule is jam-packed. Uh, what can we expect from these? 
Hey, good morning. And uh, it's a very, very crucial thing because uh, India never ever experienced this kind of uh, event. Uh, the first time after the independence, uh, we are uh, experiencing this kind of event. We are lucky enough to be saw this kind of uh, you know galaxy of gathering across the world. All the people are here available in, in India and Delhi. The most important aspect is that you know the way the G20 is getting forward. You know, G21 now. Uh, it's very historical that you know entire African, all 55 nations, almost uh, natural resources are equivalent at par with uh, India, and the population is also at par with India, and the GDP is also only nearly uh, in at par with uh, India, African nation. That is the most important uh, uh, aspect. So what I uh, feel is that the G20 has, uh, has so many uh, two three milestones, including the important uh, continental connectivity between. Uh, uh, you know, Middle East, uh, Europe, and uh, Asia, because this is what we are really waiting for. As an economist, I can tell you, this is what exactly the, uh, we need, the country needs, because India can get a manufacturing hub. We have all kind of natural resources available with us. And uh, Prime Minister Modi has took it to this kind of initiation that uh, are really uh, making, uh, you know, add this uh, Africa uh, becomes the G21 at the same time. Because he, he realizes inside, he realizes that, you know, uh, if at all the India wants to become a manufacturing hub, Africa is need to be stand along with the Asia. And uh, the uh, continental connectivity is very, very crucial aspect because Saudi Arabia is not agreeing with that. So there are, uh, a, you know, variation between the U.S. and uh, Saudi Arabia. There also it has been filled, the gap is filled. So we can see that nine years... Uh, accumulated efforts been done by the Prime Minister Modi for last nine years he met all the people and he made a personal rapport and chemistry with them individually so we saw and standing uh, shoulder to shoulder because one time we this nation has got experience uh, this kind of uh, experience we saw that we couldn't get even time of these gentlemen we couldn't get a, a time of uh, this this nation's uh, leadership attention but today, the, all the, the nations are giving uh, sitting along with us. This is the first time that Asia got a, a very, very crucial, because the entire Asia is indebted to the Prime Minister Modi, that Asia got a level playing field. Uh, you know, that is most important. Level playing, uh, level playing field is most important. Asia, Middle East and uh, uh, Europe. So now the continental connectivity allows this to happen. Uh, more than that, the bilateral meetings are happening and continuously, uh, almost 15 bilateral uh, meetings are uh, really, it is an history for the country like India because our Prime Minister never ever experienced this kind of bilateral meetings. That too, it is inside happening in, in our country, in our capital. That is what there the, the, is a gap. So uh, we are exhibiting our strengths. There is no doubt we are exhibiting our strengths. And uh, I'm sure that the way Saudi Arabia and the U.S. stood along with us, and at the same time, we we are not only you know promoting ourselves as Indian Asia's number one. We are see this manufacturing up is going to help Sri Lanka, Burma, Bangladesh, Nepal. These all countries will part of part with our manufacturing up. This is what exactly the Prime Minister Modi is playing. So the two elements which we addressed very carefully is that uh, Delhi Declaration, the Delhi Declaration. Except, uh, exceptionally well, excellent. It's a marvelous kind of thing because um, we saw a previous G20 G20 meeting, but we never experienced this. There is a, some kind of uh, voice against the declarations, but this declaration is absolutely uh, uh, no meaning because they, even they did mention about the Ukraine, a uh, Ukraine war, the responsibility, how we we have to handle that. So that's the way the diplomacy has played the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister, uh, you know, under the Prime Minister, these are number of officials really have played a very good music. So that is the way the India leadership has exhibited, you know, very clearly. So that is the most important aspect in this entire thing. There are so many uh, milestones. We are uh, one by one, one by one, we are achieving it in that. Uh, see, as I said, there are bilateral issues, right, Rishi Sonak, Rishi Sonak, even though he, he clearly, you know, mentioned that, uh, you know, he wants to take up this uh, Ukraine in a big way. So, but Prime Minister Modi diluted him and he explained, you know, pacified him so many aspects and ensured he's fall on the, on the same line 
what exactly the India thinks about it. So that is the where uh, the Prime Minister Modi is playing so many cards. He is not that he is just playing only a diplomacy card. He is playing so many other cards. So that is the way the strengthening of India because today India can simply say that even in a UN Secretary General also available, World Bank Chairman, everybody is all important organization heads are available in this place and they one by one you can see the the game is you know it is it is opening up like this. So here the country like India definitely the I personally feel the. Uh, continental connectivity is a biggest breakthrough. Really, this country is waiting for for last 75 years to get this continental connectivity to happen. And I'm sure between 2027 to 2032 that we will achieve 15 trillion economy, not 5 trillion economy. What Prime Minister, generally Prime Minister thinks about a yeah, 5 trillion economy. Now, I know that what he thinks is that he does double and triple the similar thing he has done this year in this economy also it is reach is it is the reachability is more than 15 trillion economy that is the way the whole important aspect so i personally feel this is going to be a india's major achievement because it's a right time it is a right time and a right platform and a right place in like like india and delhi it is happening because after as the mexican president um, the argentina president said they you see the entire world after you know corona they don't have any platform to exhibit or explain and understanding things like this so at, this is the place india is a, you know ensured a, a clear cut platform to a level playing level playing field to all the members across the board to explain them so this is what the a great achievement of this country and I personally feel the Prime Minister made um, exemplary efforts to ensure this smooth conduct of this event. At the same time, he ensured the India. I really personally feel that because I was there in Harvard and Stanford both. So I saw this is the first time that really India is taking, uh, you know, step by step forward. And uh, I'm really a pro feel proud uh, to become, uh, you know, you know, to be a uh, Indian, we saw this kind of experiencing, our generation is experiencing an event like G20. Indeed, sir, I'd like to open Mr. Chandra into the discussion on this point. Uh, Professor Shastri had highlighted how, uh, you know, India is making its mark globally, especially with uh, the corridor, the economic corridor with the Middle East and Europe. Uh, would you concur with these statements? Yeah, Pia, is my voice clear? Absolutely. Yeah, so good morning to you. You see, I would like to say this, that this is the most historical event which has taken place in the past few years. And Mr. Modi has proved to be the best prime minister the country has ever seen. And I will also like to add, will ever see. So this is what, what he has done is that with this very successful G20 meeting taking place, he has brought India to the top of the pole. And India has become a center of attraction. America now realizes that in the geopolitical world order, uh, India is, is its USA's biggest and most important part, uh, partner. Also, what has happened that for the first time, the biggest number of declarations and agreements have taken place and 73 in number, which itself is a record. Mr. Modi has proved to be the key driver of development of India and what has happened is this that uh, you, the, with the kind of agreements taking place uh, uh, you know winds of development PR have been unleashed and what is going to happen now is that this is also going to attract more foreign investment and in the geopolitical world order India's place is assured and I think the world now should come together and make India a permanent member of the United Nations. G20 will go a, a long way in achieving this goal, which has to be met immediately. Also, what has happened is this, that India now uh, stands tall amongst other countries. Mr. Modi stands tall. Today, he is the number, according to me, the number one world leader. Everybody gravitates towards him for advice. And whether it is President Zelensky of Ukraine or President Putin, Mr. Modi has uh, proved to be the peace negotiator 
everybody knows behind the scenes mr modi is the person who has saved the whole world from a nuclear holocaust by giving good advice to mr putin who followed his advice and has come on the negotiating table also president zelensky asked for a personal meeting in the g7 uh, meeting in hiroshima in hiroshima he was uh, going to address it virtually and he asked for a personal meeting with mr modi and he flew in and had a meeting with mr modi so this shows mr modi's importance i would like to add here pia that it is high time the country came together and the right minded intellectuals should write to the nobel peace prize committee uh, you know nominating mr modi for a nobel peace prize not only because of g20 for solving the long hanging kashmir issue which you know which was uh, at that time a grave mistake was made by jawaharlal nehru and other people and the country had to pay a heavy price it took mr modi's proactive action to solve this problem and stop you see the killing and you know spilling of innocent uh, bloods of our soldiers so today talking about g20 the uh, all india stands proud and it shows that man on the top makes a difference and i would also like to say it is very essential that mr modi uh, comes back again which he is going to come back with a thumping majority of 375 to 400 seats in the next general elections so that india becomes world's number one economy by 2047 what mr modi says he does he is a person who walks the talk he takes not only takes the bull by the horn he overturns it and he has to be as proved that our great country bharat we now no longer we should talk about india that is a foreign legacy our great country bharat is led by a bharat ratna he is a real walking talking bharat ratna of this country he is bharat ke ratan and all indians are proud of him it if the mr modi was not the prime minister abrogation of article 370 wouldn't have taken place triple talaq uh, wouldn't have been declared illegal he has brought lot of peace to muslim sisters and mothers and also above all the biggest achievement of mr modi he has not only given to, to india but to the whole world the bhavya ram lala mandir so it shows that mr modi in 9 years 10 years has done what congress could not have done in 100 years congress took this country backward by 100 years mr modi has brought this country forward by 100 years all neighbors today who are hostile are afraid of mr modi because he they know that he means business and anybody casting a evil eye on indian borders will be met with you know 10 times the force so today what has happened is this india under mr modi is far on the track of becoming the number one country in the world mr modi is not only the number one leader in india he is today because of his affirmative actions and consequential actions he has, is the in uh, the world's number one leader also what has happened is this today all leaders whether it's president biden anthony albanese or other people uh, you know the uh, president putin all world leaders today gravitate to mr modi they want to learn from mr modi what is good governance what is peaceful governance what is secular governance and Can i, I, I all of this sorry uh mr chandra uh, you can finish your point i'll come to you dr shastri yeah so what i was going to say pia is this that today everybody has realized what one man can do this g20 meeting is the most successful g20 meeting in the history of the g20 meetings you see seamlessly everybody has come on board whether it is um, you know prime minister sunak whether it is president biden whether it is it is a japanese prime minister everybody is on board because they know what mr modi says is not only good for the country for india but it is good for the whole world order and i would also like to say that the time magazine publishes every year a uh, issue called as the person of the year time magazine should now publish because of mr modi's consequential intelligent and affirmative actions a uh, uh, man of the century prime minister narendra damodar das modi this is the least we can do and we should i appeal to the publishers of time magazine 
I appeal to the Nobel Peace Prize Committee that immediately announce a Nobel Peace Prize for our great Prime Minister. I am very fortunate and I also feel that he is the protector of the Hindu Sanatan Dharma, which is the oldest religion in the world. And he is the person who has made the Ram Mandir possible. We Indians all owe to him a big thank you. And we will see, all of us will see that Mr. Modi comes back with thumping majority. Let all his detractors in this country hear that Mr. Modi is the prime minister of the whole country and he needs to be helped in the development efforts or of our great country, PM. Indeed, and you've just spoken about, uh, you know, President Biden and incidentally on our screens, you can see a conversation between Prime Minister Modi and President Biden. They're, of course, standing in front of the backdrop of the uh, Sabarmati ashram that has been placed. These are live shots viewers coming in from Rajghat in the national capital. Uh, but we're getting um, some rather interesting updates as of, as of now uh, regarding uh, President Biden's schedule. Yes. We are in fact getting to know that he uh, will not be returning to the Bharat Mandapam for the third plenary session as he is set to head for his Vietnam uh, schedule and Vietnam meetings that will take place. This is of course uh, breaking developments that we're getting in and I've just told you that. Meanwhile, I'd like to rope in Dr. Shastri again. Sir, you wanted to make a point over to you. No, no, I'm, I just want to make one point that, you know, G20, see, we are ca ca miscalculating G20, not like that because we are not uh, uh, so powerful on that because Modi has explain, explained the nation as well as the G20 a successful event conducted. But Europe at, at all understood because what I observed uh, the way the body language, the chemistry, what we say except the French, the France uh, president and that other uh, European uh, nations are not at the, on our line. On our line, there as far as the Ukraine uh, war conflict is concerned. We are uh, not uh, in, a, in a right. Uh, see, that is what I said. The draft was the Delhi declaration was. We are quite successful of uh, making the declaration. Uh, you know, uh, that's very important. At the same time, at the same time, because there is much, much, much work to be done, uh, much homework to be carried, because there is a gap between uh, a gap between uh, this uh, uh, UK UK feeling, UK the way UK. The Prime Minister Rishi Sunak expressed uh, his uh, reservation and the comments uh, with regards to Russia and Ukraine. And at the same time, we need a, a correct policy because it's not that we need to take a very, very, very thin line. Uh, it may not, uh, you know, because in a diplomacy, it is going to be a very tough line. A diplomacy is very, very uh, uh, to be addressed because we saw that UK, the BBC, uh, the BBC explained and expressed a very clear cut that you know it, it may not be uh, it's not in the uh, it is not on the lines of uh, uh, you know uh, western uh, countries and they thought uh, there will be some kind of because you know one thing i must tell you uh, we have not invited uh, this uh, Zelensky for this uh, event even though he wants to be part of this he expressed his desire he expressed his desire and intention to attend the g20 event and this uh, India, but not allowed. Here, is not invited any extended any invitation. Let us not, let us take, let us talk a uh, bilateral aspects uh, as well as the country is concerned, like India. So we should express things. It's not that in everything you uh, attribute to the Prime Minister Modi charisma. No, don't do that. This is not charisma. Is something different. It is only applicable to country like India. The Prime Minister Modi charisma doesn't work anywhere across the globe. It is only a chemistry. Everybody, end of the day, every Prime Minister represents every country's interest. Every Prime Minister represents every country's interest. If you think that Rishi Sunak will uh, compromise and give a leverage, that is a wrong thing. He will not give any leverage and a com compromise. Ah, there is an understanding and that they can sit in the table and discuss the things in uh, you know, practicality. Because the way the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak expressed, yes, we will not allow any uh, kind of uh, extremism as far as the UK land is concerned. That he agreed. But what kind of policy is want to place and what kind of uh, exercise that, you know, uh, country to country, he will make that platform. That is most important. And let us discuss on that. Not like, uh, you know, just promoting uh, somebody's. It's not that. It's a, a platform. We are addressing the uh, success of this G20 event with regards to country like India. 
but not like ex just you know making a prime minister modi yes he is did accept accept exceptionally well there is no doubt about it they thought him in this event is not going to happen we are that is that is separate don't mix up all things together the bilateral issues we have to talk very technical and a sense of technicality it is not that without taking talking and technical sense that uh, achievement is going to happen nothing is going to happen as united nations secretary general is available here why don't why is not announced that uh, uh, india is a permanent uh, council member why the people are not announcing all are available here all are available including chinese prime minister is available so the thing is as i have said see a, a conducting a event successful is something different and making things bilaterally in our favor is something different presenting things in front of the other prime ministers in a such a manner the manner which the countries other other countries accept in a terms and agreed in terms a sitting in table is something different so don't mix up so many things you know in a in a combo package and it doesn't work like that and one should not get into that kind of thing because you need a defense and diplomacy defense and diplomacy doesn't attract any charisma any any prominence or any eminence it is your principles of your nation it is your principles of your nation it is your the way you look for your policy with regards to foreign policy it is not it doesn't attract any charisma any leadership or anything it is your point of your point how you are communicating the power of speech and communication the power of speech and communication certainly leverage get the leverage prime minister modi because he understand things better than any other leader but he can express up to one extent so expecting so much from the prime minister and, and after that we say no prime minister not able to do no i will not allow that to happen prime minister is also human being we should respect him regard him as sir we as a nation has a responsibility as a leader is having a responsibility we as a nation has a responsibility to make sure that things to happen it is not the only one prime minister do everything so that is not correct that's what my as far as the with regards to policy framework is concerned uh i'd like to rope in miss bakshi who has been waiting rather patiently uh ma'am speaking of principles uh prime minister modi's statement very famous statement that today's era must not be that of a war has been uh, a separate paragraph this one small statement it's it's a separate paragraph that is included in the delhi declaration what do you make of this and is this testament to india's stature as a vishwa guru uh, especially when it comes regarding the endeavor to establish peace absolutely and you know if you look at the post ukraine uh, scenario and and in fact when it was very much in the heat and how india was being looked at uh, how india has now in this d20 uh, declaration has tackled that it has created a very very you know uh, the tight row balancing act as they say so uh, uh, as far as ukraine is concerned it has put forward a human centric value at at the same time there is russia uh, though the president is not here and has represented to uh, mr lavrov uh, uh, you know not naming uh, uh, russia as such so i think that has been really really critically acclaimed also as how it has dealt very sensitively this whole uh, uh, you know issue uh, post ukraine conflict so it is saying india and through uh, the leadership and prime minister modi when he talks about doing away with trust deficit making relationships and creating an order of peace and i think the example is being set this morning by uh, you know visit, uh, visiting of uh, delegates at rajghat with sabarmati in the background mahatma gandhi being the biggest ambassador of peace in the global arena this is a this is a reflection of what india believes in and what india is showcasing that uh, let's let's look at you know this common consensus that how we can create this order of peace by creating economic stability technological advancements which serves the lives of people uh, you know and uh if we, yes ma'am in fact as you are speaking we are getting visuals from rajghat uh let's in fact dip into what's happening at the moment so that the viewers can get the feel of what's taking place there maj ka jaman re sanarag maj ka jaman re sanarag nanan janani tere re maj ka 
Highnesses and Excellencies, thank you for joining us for this special occasion at Rajghat. I will now request the leaders to kindly step forward and adjust the country ribbons on the reeds, please. We shall now have a moment's silence, please. Thank you, Excellencies. Oh, 
devotional songs playing as leaders have paid their tribute to the Mahatma. Of course, a moment of silence was also witnessed uh, as leaders honoured Mahatma Gandhi. A solemn atmosphere was created. Um, a live performance was in fact taking place at the venue regarding uh, Mahatma Gandhi's favourite devotional songs which you've just heard. I'd like to open Ms Bakshi to the conversation once again. Uh, Ma'am, you can definitely continue from where we left off. Actually, uh, you know, I can tell you today that Vaishnav Janto Tene Kahiji is one of my favorites. So actually, I was uh, uh, quite, uh, you know, involved when the bhajan was going on. One of the favorites uh, of Mahatma Gandhi. And it, you know, if for the international audience, if I may uh, translate, Vaishnav Janto Tene Kahiji Peer Parai Janere, which means the, the uh, you know, those are the ones uh, who really understand other sorrow are the ones who've really arrived. So we have to understand, uh, you know, other sorrow. And this is the this is the uh, peace message that India is advocating also at this stage. So it really, uh, you know, resonates with the idea of India, so to say today, at the Rajkata. Also, Raghupati Raghav Raja Ram, Sabko Sammati De Bhagwan means better sense prevail. And that's what again India is saying that in the world order, let all countries create solidarity, more understanding, more humanistic approach towards each other. And that's what would avoid conflict and create more peace and harmony. And uh, this is the sense of harmony that India is right now advocating to do away with conflict because conflict creates disorder, whether economic and whether fragile. Uh, situations and that's that's through this Rajghat visit and uh, in the Sabarmati background this this is what India is saying coming back to some of the things that we are also talking about here is uh, is uh, you know that's why inclusion and inclusion in many ways here uh, for example inclusion economically for example in inclusion energy wise so we are talking about uh, inclusive energy ideas of renewable energy how to cut costs as far as biofuel is concerned how to create more room for everyone to be in 
uh, so I think Rajghat visit is very, very symbolic of India's strength, the India's inherent, uh, you know, uh, capacity and capability to bring uh, uh, these ideas of peace together. And this is what it is telling the world today. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and that's a, such a beautiful message. Uh, we are in Delhi Declaration, we were talking about, talking about this only, uh, that how to create this healing touch. Uh, and, and harmony and hope for everyone to adopt actually uh, and in the in the world order I mean coming back to also some of the leaders so for example Rishi Sunaf you just saw he's also gone to the uh, Akshadham temple and we are told uh, that he performed it with a lot of faith uh, so while India and UK are talking about trade agreements we have uh, FTAs uh, being discussed between uh, India and UK we are looking at these soft, uh, you know, uh, diplomacy aspects also. And I think that soft diplomacy aspect, people to people, track to diplomacy is very much visibly at work right now. Um, and India is taking it forward, uh, you know, very beautifully at this stage. Um, these bhajans in the morning has set the tone for today's deliberations also when uh, we have some more bilaterals coming in uh, with the leaders. The French president is here who arrived yesterday in the afternoon. Uh, so uh, we are looking forward to uh, these uh, deliberations today as well. We are already on a high after this Delhi declaration being successful, uh, keeping the case of India's diplomatic, uh, uh, you know, uh, understanding and its strength very much on the world stage. Um, so it has really set the tone rightly. SDGs is something that we uh, we really really looked at in in this Delhi declaration. Uh, so, uh, trying to really work on all these areas, but there are challenges we should not forget because there are areas where every nation would look at, uh, you know, of course their own homegrown interest, but how to then create that consensus is something that India has very uh, carefully looked at and that's what is the, uh, is the whole aspect of uh, New Delhi Leaders Declaration in G20 Summit. Uh, this morning, I can tell you, uh, and on news that we've been talking about, so many aspects has really set this soft tone for everyone to now, when they sit on the table and uh, try and, uh, you know, really iron out their differences and come to a common consensus on so many things. Uh, this idea of Vaishnav Janto Tene Kaye will really, really resonate and they'll take back home that idea when they go back to their own countries. So I, I, th I think a great beginning for the day today. Indeed, on that note, I'd also like to rope in Mr. Chandra. Um, sir, human-centric approach that Ms. Bakshi spoke of, this is something that the Prime Minister has highlighted time and again, whether it's uh, through the written means or uh, even at the international forum while speaking. Uh, India's G20 presidency, uh, the sheer scale at which it was conducted, uh, it spanned across 60 cities, involved uh, more than uh, 1 lakh delegates. And uh, it, it is a kind of G20 that has never been witnessed before. But the core of this was witness to a human-centric approach. What other lessons will uh, other countries learn from India through this matter? Yeah, Pia, I wanted to congratulate you because that's a very intelligent observation you made. What has happened is this, Mr. Modi with his comprehensive understanding of world geopolitics in one stroke has planted India's flag firmly on top of the pole of the world economic, political and social order. Also what has happened is this, Mr. Modi has proved to be the most consequential leader not only of India but in the world because he is the most inclusive prime minister the country has ever seen. But he says, we all have to work together for development. All his actions are geared towards one thing, that everybody in our country comes under the umbrella of economic development. People who have been denied a lot of things come there. And also, he is not a hypocrite. He, is, uh, he has said nothing uh, in this country will happen compromising the majority community of this country. So he is not a pseudo-secularist, he is a secularist in the true sense of the world. He is the most unifying factor today in our country. What has happened is this, that he has brought peace, economic prosperity and development. We, ha we have to, when we change the orbit, there are certain discomforts, but we will face it 
so that today you see all these um, you know all the development all the yojanas all uh, the programs of the government are geared that to the last man in this country the last person in this country what has also happened is this that by his actions he is now like sardar patel he is the new iron man of india and he is also a father figure to all indians he looks upon everybody as you know equal and he has ensured like he ensured in gujarat that all our mothers and sisters can walk peacefully today the citizens of delhi who have seen all the preparation and all the decorations on everything being conducted seamlessly are saluting and they are saying that what um, a one man can do to transform not only not only delhi but the whole country also what has happened is this today the world leaders are looking in amazement and in wonder and also in applause that how to govern a country mr modi has also one person who has got a iron grip on the whole country or on the whole you know policy of this country he is a person and he walks the talk the buck stops at his table and he takes responsibility for his action he is not a rubber stamp prime minister like manmohan singh he is a person and he is a person who says nobody is close to me either you perform or you perish everything is time bound and all schemes have been completed before time so here is one person who needs to be applauded and we must make sure that he comes back with a thumping majority to take the country you know fast strides country should develop and 2047 we are in the amrit kal and i would like to say that all of us uh, we would should uh, give a standing ovation how one person his policies have gone through and today g20 has become more successful of course there will be some agreements and we all uh, head of state will look after their own interest that's common sense but today he has brought them on the table and when mr modi speaks the world listens that is uh, the take of this g20 because today every all leaders whether it is mr joe biden you know went uh, out of his way in the g7 summit to go and shake hands anthony albanese calls him boss and when he goes to papua new guinea the president of the country touches his feet so this shows what one person can achieve through sheer hard work honesty and dedication and today he is a matchless world leader he has proved he has taken india to top of the poll and himself he is the top most world leader today appear all right sir um with that i will have to wrap up this discussion due to paucity of time but i would like to thank my guests for joining us on this broadcast meanwhile viewers we'll continue to track developments regarding the g20 meetings for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon